Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Daniel and I help photographers like you create meaningful portraits and successful portrait photography businesses. So in today's topic, what I wanna do is show you exactly how I edit skin tones of my portraits inside of Photoshop. But before I get into the nerdy gritty, I want to talk about what are the factors that affect skin tones in our portraits. So everything, actually happens at camera level. It starts off with putting your subject in good light, good directional light and good quality of light and selecting an appropriate white balance for the scene that you are shooting in. Now, from my experience, I had this issue right at the beginning with my portraits where everybody looked gray and pale and lifeless. And what was happening is, is that I was setting my camera to auto white balance and I was letting my camera decide the colors in my scene. So white balance and good light tied together form the foundations of a good starting point when it comes to skin tones. In fact, good light and a good white balance on your camera sets the stage for good colors in your image altogether. Not just skin tones, but all the colors. So that is absolutely key. We need to get that part right. Unfortunately, these things start falling apart when we start shooting in poor light, poor quality of light, poor direction of light, like we've got in this portrait of Michelle. This portrait is shot in poor light or poor quality of light. The direction of light is pretty nice, but the quality isn't. And the reason why is because of the light patterns that we've selected to shoot in and the location that we are shooting in. Look at the environment around her face. We've got a lot of yellows, we've got a lot of foliage, and what's happening in this case is that we've got very strong open source light, bright sunlight shining into our location, reflecting off the color of the foliage around her. And what's happening is that indirect light is bouncing off and going into her face, and it's creating these yellow casts in the forehead, on the cheeks, on the chin, on the nose, and everywhere else. This is creating an issue for us. Putting our subject into a location where it's got a lot of external influences in terms of indirect light. So the light's coming down, it's bouncing off the green foliage, and it's bouncing that color of the foliage back into your subjects. So for those of you who are simply putting your subjects under the shade of a tree on a bright afternoon, this is your issue. The light is coming down around your subject, sometimes through the leaves itself, but also bouncing off grass in front of your subjects back into their face, and that is causing the issues. So we need to look at our locations. We need to look at the time of the day that we're shooting in. We don't want to have hard light striking surfaces near our subjects that can create these color casts in the skin tones and thus creating havoc with the skin. I've got another example of this. Look at this portrait here. We can see a lot of yellow in the skin tones. Actually, I'll do even better. I'll show you the location live. So we'll just rewind this a little bit and look at that beautiful wall. This wall has got this creamy beige color and it's actually bouncing that hard light back into our subject. Let's turn our camera around. We've got the sun high up over here and it's shining directly against this wall. But I was kind of strategic when it came to shooting in this location. I saw this wall as a beautiful source of light going back into our subject. And we'll go and look at that image now in a moment inside of Photoshop. But we had this beautiful direction of light going across our lovely mommy here. But the problem was the color of the walls were tainted with this orangey sort of beige color and it was reflecting back into our subject. Now, fortunately, I was able to adjust my white balance at camera level, but there was still a hint of yellow in the skin tones. Let's go and have a look at the image. So you can see here, we've got yellows in the skin, but the other issue that could have contributed to the yellows in her skin was the top that she was wearing. It's not bad, but it could have influenced the skin tonalities. So it's very important to understand how we style our clients, the colors that they choose to wear because that can influence the tonalities of the skin. All this reflected light bounced off of her yellow top back into her face. Let's have a look at a more severe case. The fabric over here 
wasn't that reflective, it was okay. But I think this was a mixture of this yellow wall and of course the yellow top. If we go to this image here, look at that. That's crazy. We've got this bright fluorescent green top and it's reflecting back into her face. Look under the chin here. Look under the cheeks, under the nose, in the hair. Even on the brickwork or this pillar, we've got this light bouncing off of this very fluorescent color back into our subject. So let's go and have a look at how to deal with the colors in Michelle's face. The very first thing that I'm going to do is create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now I said this process is simple, it really, really is. So we've identified that the forehead and other areas of her skin have got a large amount of yellows in them. So I naturally split my skin tones into two colors, yellows and reds. Those are the two primary colors that you find most in skin tones. What we're going to do is go over to the yellow circle here. We're going to select it and I'm gonna ramp the hue slider all the way to 180. Why am I doing that? I just want to get a base reference as to the range of colors inside of her face. You can see that this is the range selector. This defines what set of colors are being selected and you can adjust this width over here. But as we slide our slider to the right, we can get a sense of those yellows in her skin. It's right there. I'm gonna leave it where it is now. On her chest, we can see we've got yellow tonalities around the chin area, around the cheek, on the nose. And that's exactly the areas that are identified. So turn that on and off, and you can see that everything else that was yellow and green has been selected. What I need to do now is click on the layer mask here and invert it like that. And what I wanna do is grab a soft brush. So if we go over to our brush settings, I've got a soft round brush, it's set to 90 at the moment. And I wanna make sure that my opacity is 100 and flow is 100. And I'm just gonna paint over the skin tones, only the skin tones, not the hair, not the eyes, just the skin. The reason why I say not the eyes is if I actually paint it, you can see that we might change the color. We don't wanna do that. We just want to deal with the affected skin tonalities, just like that. It doesn't matter if I pop over the hair a little bit here, but I just wanna make sure that I'm selecting the skin tones only, and we get to make some magic happen. Look at that. We have all of the yellows in her skin tone selected, and all I'm going to do is just drag my hue slider back into the red range. As simple as that. I said it was gonna be simple, but there you have it, before and after. We've already started aligning those yellow skin tones back to the rest of the skin tones in her face, the red tonalities. And we're gonna go over to the red tonalities now. All I'm going to do is select another hue and saturation adjustment layer. I separate these two because we don't want them to overlap. And in this case, I'm going to select the reds in the skin tones. I'm gonna to ramp this up to 180 like we did before. And instead of moving into the right side of our color selector, I'm going to move over to the left side and I'm gonna scroll all the way over until just the lips are being selected. And then I'm gonna move it slowly but surely back until I've just got some of those red tones selected. It's just past the lips that we're selecting that we find the rest of the reds. It's round about there. Now I don't want to play around too much with the reds. There aren't really any severe red tonalities in her skin. So we'll leave it like that and I'm gonna invert the mask again and then just paint over the reds in those areas. I wanna bring the reds and the yellows together to harmonize the skin tones, just like that. And again, we're gonna shift the hue to the yellows. There is another little problematic area that we've got on her cheek here. And that was from the light that actually penetrated the hair follicles and created this little, uh, this little area where it's a little bit more saturated as such. So there's still a little bit of an issue with the tonality right here. I'm going to flatten the image and we are going to create another layer. So we're gonna copy that layer. We're gonna press Command J or Alt J on a PC. And I'm gonna tackle this from a slightly different perspective. What I'm going to use is our camera raw filter. But before I do that, I wanna explain why I'm switching over to this process. Through my experience, I actually found that selecting 
orange tonalities in skin tones inside of Photoshop is a little bit problematic. Let me just demonstrate why. If I go back to our previous method of hue and saturation, and I select a little hand tool here because we obviously don't have an orange in the lineup, I'm going to select this area where her skin tones are really, really orange. And you'll notice that it automatically sets it to red. So if I ramp this to 180, we're selecting all the red tonalities yet again. And then obviously I can push this back to where we've got the reds, but it's only searching for the reds. And if I move it over this way here, we're going over to the yellow range. So it can't quite pick up the orange tonalities unless we bring these little pointers in very close and we try to target just that specific color range. You'll notice that it's not quite getting it. So I found a way around this by going into the camera raw filter and what we're going to do is we go to the camera raw filter right here. What we're going to do is we're going to go from the mixer option or the mixer panel and we're going to go to point color. And what I want to try and do is isolate just this little area where it's slightly more saturated. I'm going to grab the little eyedropper tool and I'm going to drop it onto that location. And you can see that we've got a good selection of that orangey skin tone. And we're going to have a look at what range that falls into you can see that it's actually selected quite a lot of her skin tones. If I select the range again, we are gonna try and nail that in. So the first thing that I'm gonna look at is affecting the range. We don't want all those skin tones selected. We want to refine the range. Now refining this range hasn't got any effect on trying to select just that area there. So what am I going to do? We're gonna look at the saturation range. So the saturation range needs to be tightened up. So we're gonna move the slider on the saturation range here to really nail in that specific area. And you can see it's getting better. It's getting closer to selecting that range that we're looking at. So let's just move that in to the really saturated areas. Look at that. Can you see that? So we just played with the saturation range. Remember that we're looking at the saturation elements in the portrait. Let's just turn that off quickly. You can see that this area here is highly saturated and this little area here is highly saturated. Let's turn on that range again. Boom, there we go. Look at that. So we've selected that range of saturation that we need to bring down to conform to the rest of the tonalities in Michelle's face. So let's have a look. We are going to drop the saturation just a tiny little bit, and there we go. Look at that. We've used point color to adjust that little area of our subject very, very accurately. As you can see, we've already helped her tonalities out and improve them quite dramatically. The other way that we can affect that area is to go over to our sponge tool. And we've got a desaturate option right here. We can set the flow to very low and then just brush over that area that feels a little bit more saturated. And there you go. So before and after, pushing the saturation level back there a little bit has really helped improve the results in her skin tones. So there you have it, folks. What we've done is we've looked at what causes those color issues, and this is the fix for it. So if you've got portraits that you've taken in poor quality of light, and you've got a lot of color costs in your subject's skin tones, this is the fix for that. But remember, in order to stop doing this in post, you need to look back at what's happening at camera level. And that's number one, choosing the right lighting patterns to shoot in, choosing an appropriate white balance to be in, and this type of thing isn't going to be a major issue. I still use the hue and saturation adjustment layers to refine skin tones, even in good light. Some people might have some red tonalities in the skin that need shifting over to the yellows, or you know, like if you're editing a newborn session, the baby might have yellow jaundice and you want to shift those yellows to the reds. There's many uses of the hue and saturation adjustment tools to correct skin tones. This is just one of them that we're looking at, you know, correcting bad skin tones because of color cast. I felt this was an appropriate topic to cover because I've seen that it is a problem for many people and I see it a lot in the forums where folks talk about issues with green costs and yellow costs. It's all to do with the light 
And if you have those images already and you want to correct it, this is the way to go about correcting those skin tones. So there you have it, folks. I hope this has been an informative session and you can go out and go and edit your images effectively or at least pay attention to objects around your subjects that might cause color casts. Thank you so much for the awesome support and we'll see you in the next session. Cheers for now.